Good morning students. We are discussing on pavement design and highway construction. Our today's topic is rigid pavement design and specifically in this lecture we will discuss on uh, design of different joints we are providing for the rigid pavement construction as well as uh, the tie bars that we are providing in the rigid pavement. So let's start the lecture with the first topic that is the design of joints okay first of all let me tell you that we are providing two different joints the first one that is the expansion joints and the contraction joints so first of all let's talk on the expansion joints the purpose of providing the expansion joints is to allow the expansion of the pavement due to the rise in temperature with respect to the construction temperature now the for the design consideration the expansion joints provided along the longitudinal direction now this design involves the finding the joint spacing as well as the thickness of that expansion joints so as per the irc recommendation for the expansion joint the thickness is specified as a 2.5 centimeter and the maximum spacing that is 140 millimeter as per the IRC specification. So this is the design criteria for the expansion joints that the thickness should be generally 2.5 centimeter and this that spacing between two joints does not exceed 140 millimeter. So this was all about the expansion joints and let's talk on the contraction joints. This can be possible for two different slabs. That is the first one that is the plain concrete slab and the RCC slab. Okay, let's talk on the plain concrete slab. Here the contraction of the slab is resisted by the friction between the bottom of the slab and the subgrade. The total here for the contraction joint the total tension in the cement concrete that is considered equal to the, fr the frictional resistance of subgrade up to the center so with that we have one formula so to make the slab stable we have to consider the total tension in the cement concrete is equals to the frictional resistance of the subgrade that up to the center so with that we have one formula that s into 100 h is equals to wlf by 2 where s into 100 h is the total tension in the cement concrete wherein wlf by 2 is the frictional resistance of subgrade up to the center with that in the rcc slab in the contraction in the slab is resisted by the reinforcement and the spacing between the contracting contraction joint is given as l is equals to 2 into ft into as upon fw so these two are the provision of joints expansion and contraction now here we will see one example that is based on the contraction joints so what example says find the spacing between contraction joints for 3.80 cm with a slab width having a thickness of 15 cm here both plain and concrete slab for both the plain plain concrete slab and the rcc slab the ultimate tensile stress values in concrete and steel are 1.62 and 1200 kilogram per centimeter square the unit weight of the concrete and the steel are mentioned that is the 2400 and 7500 kilogram per meter cube the coefficient of the friction is 1.5 and the desired factor of safety is 2 total reinforcement of 3 kilogram per meter square is provided in provided and is equally distributed in both the direction here we have 
two different slab the first slab that is of plain concrete and the second one is the rcc slab and we have formula for both the cases so we will uh, we will solve it uh, by considering the first slab that is the plain concrete slab okay for the plain concrete slab we have a formula that s into 100 h is equals to wlf by 2 now we need the spacing so for that we have to make l as a subject okay so l is equals to 2 into 100 that is 200 s into h upon w into f now here s is nothing but the ultimate tensile stress in the concrete now to find out the s value we have a formula that is s is equal to ultimate tensile stress in concrete to the factor of safety we have ultimate tensile stress as a 1.62 and the factor of safety is 2 so here we are getting the value of s that is 0.81 kilogram per centimeter square after finding out the s we have to find out the value of w so to find out the value of w we have to multiply 24 into 15 15 is nothing but the thickness of the pavement and with that we will get the value as a 360 kilogram per centimeter square after finding out the w we have we have coefficient of friction f as a 1.5 h as a 15 centimeter and with that L will be 200 into 0.81 into 15 divided by 360 into 1.5. So by simplifying this, we will get the value as a 4.5 meter. After that, let's discuss on the RCC slab. Now for RCC slab, we have a formula L is equals to 2 into FT into AS upon FW. Now, Taking 1 meter length of the slab, the cross sectional area of the steel that is AS in the one direction per meter of slab width is given as the total reinforcement upon 2 that is equals to AS upon 10 raised to 4 into unit weight of the steel. Now, keeping AS as a subject, we will get the value of AS as a 2 centimeter square. After that, we need to find the value of Ft and Ft is equal to ultimate tensile stress in the steel upon the factor of safety. Okay, and that is 600 kilogram per centimeter square. Now here we have Ft value, we have the value of As and we know the factor of and we know the coefficient of friction that is F is 1.5. Okay, we have W as a 360 kilogram per meter square and after that, substituting all this value in the value uh, in the formula of L, we will get the value of spacing of contraction joint that is 4.44 meter. That is nearly equal to 4.5. So we can say the spacing of contraction joints for uh, plain uh, for plain concrete slab as well as the RCC slab would be 4.5 meter. So this was all about the design of joints. The design criteria for the joints, expansion as well as the contraction. Now, next is design of tie bars. Now, in case of opening of longitudinal joints, is anticipated in case of heavy traffic, side long grounds, expensive subgrade, etc. We need to provide the tie bars. Tie bars across the longitudinal joints are designed to assuming that the slab faces at longitudinal joints will be firmly held together to ensure the adequate load transfer. Now, the area of steel that we required per meter length for these joints is AS is equals to B into F into W upon S, wherein AS is but obvious area of steel that we will always get in centimeter square okay and this is required this is the area of steel that is required per meter length of joint okay now if we talk about the value of b b is nothing but the length width that is in meter okay now f 
is the coefficient of friction. W is equals to weight of slab in kilogram per meter square per centimeter of slab thickness. S is the allowable working stress. Now, the length of the tie bar. Now, this was all about the area of steel required. Okay. After the A, considering the area. Next, we have to jump on the design of length. How much length we can design for the tie bars. So, for the length of the tie bar, it should be at least twice that required to develop a bond strength that is equal to the working stress of the steel. The capital L, that is the length of the tie bar, is equals to 2 into S into A upon B into P, where L is the length of the tie bar, A is the cross-sectional area of one tie bar, P is the parameter of the tie bar, that is generally considered as a pi into D, while B is the permissible bond stress of the concrete. Now, with that, we can design the tie bars by calculating the value of A and L. So, let's see an example of the designing tie bars. The example says that a cement concrete pavement has a thickness of 32 centimeter and has two lanes of 7 meter width. So, one lane width would be 3.5 meter okay with a longitudinal joint now design the dimensions of spacing of the tie bar okay design the dimensions that means we have to find out the area of steel and the spacing of the tie bar with using this data okay in the data we are given that allowable working stress in tension that is 800 kilogram per centimeter square Unit weight of concrete that is 2400 kilogram per meter cube. Allowable tensile stress in plain bar that is 1250 kilogram per centimeter square. And in the second case, the allowable tensile stress in the deformed bars that is 2000 kilogram per centimeter square. So here again, we have two cases first for the plain bar and the second that is for the deformed bar. Okay, allowable bond stress in plain bar that is 17.5 kilogram per centimeter square and allowable bond stress in deformed bar that is 24.6 kilogram per centimeter square. And at the end, we are given with the diameter of the tie bar as a 12 mm. So with all this data, now we have to design a tie bars. So let's go to the solution. Now, first we will see the spacing and length for the plain bar. After that, we will design for the deformed bar. Okay. Now, we have to consider 1 meter width of the joint and for the tie bar across the longitudinal joints, the steel required, that is the AS, is equals to B into F into W upon S. We have the value of B, that is for the two lane is 7 meter, so for single lane, it is 3.5 meter f that is the coefficient of friction if not given we have to adopt the value as a 1.5 the value of w that is 2400 into 32 that is the thickness of the pavement upon 100 so we'll get the value as a 768 kilogram per square meter now for the s value we have 1250 kilogram per centimeter square so s will be 3.2256 square centimeter per meter okay generally we will get the value of as as a square centimeter okay this is per meter because of we have considered one meter width of the joints okay so for that the steel required is 3.2256 square centimeter now, the spacing of the tie bar is given by 100 upon AS into pi d square by 4, wherein AS we have uh, calculated as a 3.2256 and other values are given in the data. So, with that, we will get the value of AS as 
27.4 centimeter that is around value we can adopt as a 27 centimeter that is the center to center spacing for the tie bars so after uh, calculating the steel required we have to move for the sp uh, length of the tie bar so to determine the tie bar length we have a formula 2 into sa upon v into p we have a value of s we have the value of a by pi by 4 d square we will get the a as a 1.31 1 square centimeter p as a pi d so we'll get the value of p as a 3.771 centimeter and v as a 17.5 kilogram per centimeter square so with that we will get the value of l as a 42.85 that we will consider as a 43 centimeter so the length of the bar would be 43 centimeter but here we have to also add the value of painting and the tolerance level of the pavement so with that we will increase the length of 10 centimeter for the loss of bond due to painting and the 5 centimeter for the tolerance in the placements so the final length of, of the tie bar would be 43 plus 10 plus 5 that is 58 centimeter so at the end if we consider the design for the plain bars we have the dimensions as a diameter as a 12 mm length as a 58 centimeter and the spacing as a 27 centimeter diameter we are already given so 12 meter was the diameter length and spacing we have determined from the data so let's discuss on the spacing and length for the deformed bar tie bar we have as value as a bfw upon s wherein we will get the value of as as a 2.016 centimeter square that is of one meter width of the joint then spacing of the tie bar that is 100 into 1.313 upon 2.016 so we'll get the value as a 56.1 centimeter that is center to center distance and we will consider the 56 centimeter we cannot consider the fraction value so we will consider it as a 56 centimeter per centimeter that is the center to center distance now for the length of the tie bar we have an equation and for that we'll get if we substitute the values in that way uh, formula we will get the value that is 48.77 so we'll consider the value as a 49 centimeter so here also we will increase the length by 10 centimeter for the loss of bond due to the painting and 5 centimeter for the tolerance value and final l will be the 64 centimeter so as a dimension diameter is 12, 12 mm length as a 64 centimeter and the spacing is 56 centimeter okay with this i am concluding this lecture thank you so much students for your kind attention i hope you understand the topic thoroughly we'll see you in the next lecture with the next topic